like I said, these are the kinds of things which, because they're so important, they come up again and again and again. You really want to have them in your back pocket. Like, you don't want to have to think to get these. Now, I'm against memorizing things for the sake of memorizing things. Like, that's one of the quickest ways you can be like, I don't know what any of this means. I just learned it by rote, and that's how I can say it, right? You do want to understand what's going on. But, memorizing can be really useful, right? Just like if I'm, um, if any of you learn to drive, okay? You're gonna memorize, like, where your gear is and how you move it up and down and how many spots you move it. Because you don't want to be like, ooh, I've got a reverse. Hold on, hold on, which one is it? Okay, right, I'm fine now. You can't take your eyes off the road. You can't take your hand off the steering wheel. You want to have those things just in here not having to think about them consciously. And it's a similar kind of thing for this, right? Now, to get these, to get these, sign 30 kind of is the basic, most important one that you need to memorize because you get the rest of them, more or less, out of that one. Who remembers? It's the first fraction I showed you. It's the simplest one. It's a half, very good, okay? Now you may recall, we constructed a triangle out of this. It looks like this, right angle. If I put that 30 degrees in the corner, sign of course is, which ratio is it, which sides? Opposite on hypotenuse. So here's the opposite and here's the hypotenuse, right? You remember there's the 1 over 2, okay? And then from Pythagoras we showed that, that last side in there is root 3, which will give you the next ratio. Cos 30, off the diagram, adjacent on hypotenuse, right? Root 3 on 2, okay? Once you reach 45 degrees, you need that other triangle, right? If I've got the right angle again and 45, what does that mean up in the top corner? For that angle, also 45. So this is our isosceles right angle triangle that we got here, right? So if I call these sides equal, 1 and 1, that means the hypotenuse is going to be, from Pythagoras, root 2. You might remember that number, okay? So therefore, cos 45 adjacent on hypotenuse is 1 on root 2. 10, 60, we can return to our first triangle for that one. What ratio of sides is 10? What ratio is it? So uh, toa, opposite on adjacent, there's 60 up there, right? So you're going to get opposite on adjacent. It's just root 3, yeah? Okay, excellent. Now, I went around and had a look at how you're going with these graphs. Can I say as well, you remember when I showed you that first um, sheet on the first day last week, I said, okay, here's the U10-5-3 course, here's the 2 unit course. And then I drew all these links, right? Graphing is this really, really critical skill, which if you don't feel very confident with at the moment, then come and ask for help. That's why I'm here, okay? But you must ask for help if you don't feel confident. You cannot leave this skill behind. It'd be a little bit like, you know, I, my son, he's learning to read, okay? And um, they learn sight words like cat and dog, right? They learn that kind of at the same time as they learn letters, okay? So like individual letters, which make up words. Now he can do that for a little while and not know what the letters in a word are, but still recognize the word. But he can't do that forever, right? He's got to pretty quickly get this skill. I know all my alphabet and I don't have to think about him anymore. Otherwise he's never going to progress. He's, never, he's only going to know how to read words that he's memorized, right? And it's a similar thing with graphs, right? These are kind of like your building blocks, your alphabet. So you really got to master them. Y equals X squared. I think most people recognize that one should look like that, should have a nice smooth curve, and it should pass through the origin, right at the middle, right at the bottom, okay? Now this one, this one's a little bit sneaky. A lot of people have seen, oh, there's a minus sign. I know what it means when there's a minus sign in front of a parabola. It means that there's a um, concave down, it's a frowny face, a sad one, right? And it should be convex. However, however, it's not. Have a look, right? This guy here, it's, um, I can expand this. This is just, you know, brackets and I can square it out, right? So 2 minus x squared is short for this, right? 2 minus x, 2 minus x, do you agree with that? Okay, so let's just expand this guy, right? 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times minus x is minus 2x. Okay, so I've done the first one. Then I go minus x times 2, which is minus 2x. And then this last term Watch out, there's two negatives, and when you multiply them together, they cancel, right? So in fact, what you get here is a plus x squared. It's also, just like this guy, it's, um, it's concave up, okay? That's the direction it's facing. I'll just rewrite this so it's a little bit neater. That's what you're used to seeing, okay? So watch out there, there's a bit of a trap. Now, therefore, what does it look like? 
when I have a look at the root, right, x equals 2 is going to be what I'm going to get instead of x equals 0 in there. So this is the shape I'm going to have. Okay, you can quickly test out if you like. If you substitute in, if you put in the value x equals 2 here, you'll get 2 minus 2, which is just 0, right? And that's why I'm right there on the axis, okay? For bonus points, what's that? point there, the y-intercept. It's 4. And you can read it off straight away once I've expanded it. There he is, right there. Okay? Because the way you get the y-intercept is, how do you find the y-intercept of a function? Like when you just, if it's something really random, not something nice and neat like this, how do you go about finding the y-intercept? You let, does anyone remember? You let x, x, you let them be 0. Because on the y-axis, all of these points here, x is equal to 0. Right? But when x is equal to 0, these guys just disappear. x squared disappears, 0 squared. 4 times 0, I don't care. Anything times 0, still 0, disappears. And you just get left with that guy, the 4. Okay. So there's your graph. 